Hey, y'all, help me get to 168,000 subscribers. We are 148 away. I want to be able to hit this benchmark before the 2024 NFL draft. Why? So I think saying hitting 169 during the draft would be pretty nice. So if you bleed silver and black, if you appreciate what Chugs and I do here, an easy way to say thank you, 100% free, is to click that subscribe button. Raider Nation, what's going on? I'm Mitchell Renz, host of the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we got some conflicting rumors from Vic Tafer from The Athletic and ESPN on what the Raiders could potentially do at pick 13. And I know this time of the year is the smoke screens. There's a lot of, oh, I know this. They don't know that. Bottom line is this. Anytime there are updates around what the Raiders could potentially do at pick 13, I'm going to do my best to keep you guys up to date. So if you don't know where this story is coming from, from Tafer, he did a mock draft recently. The Athletic ended up doing one where they take all of their beat reporters and have them pick for their respected team. So obviously Tafer ends up picking for the Las Vegas Raiders. And because of that, Tafer picked Fuwaga, but said that Las Vegas does like Michael Penix Jr. a lot. So when he wrote his write-up, okay, and broke down all the reasons why the Raiders decided to go with Fuwag at 13. He put a certain paragraph in that write-up that a lot of people have taken and kind of run with here a little bit, which I do find interesting that he says that the Raiders do really like Penix and then had the opportunity to take him and pass on him for Talisi Fuwaga. But this was the write-up that Tafer had on the Washington quarterback. The whispers, whispers are getting louder that the Raiders just might take Washington quarterback Michael Penix Jr. here, which again was at pick 13. Penix's stock has risen since he had clean medicals at the NFL scouting combine. He has the best deep ball in the draft, but in our book, it is still a bit of a project mechanically to be taken this high. It's bad value. So one of the things that Taper says there is, Penix at pick 13 is bad value. When you look at some of the numbers that he was able to put up last season, like he was an unbelievable quarterback for Washington. Really, the only bad game that he had, and I kind of feel bad for him, was in the natty against Michigan because the week before that he played Texas, that was the, that might be the best quarterback performance I have seen all season long. Like Penix to me can be a dog. And yes, he might have the best deep ball. He might have the best arm talent in this year's draft. Dude can throw the piss out of a football with his Kawhi Leonard hands. But there are some things, especially on that lower half of with his body, that does scare certain teams away from him. My question to you is this. In your honest opinion, if the Raiders end up taking Michael Penix Jr. at pick 13, is that bad value? Do you think it's good value? Do you think it's bad value? Is drafting Penix at 13 bad value. Give me a yes. Give me a no. Let me know what y'all are thinking down below. For me personally on this one, I will admit that I don't think that the value is great. Like the value to me is not very good value. I always say that I want to take best player available and I don't want to have to reach on a certain position. This to me is a reach. But I will also say if it is draft night and it's round one and the Raiders go up there to that podium and they say, hey, we're taking Michael Penix Jr. at 13. I will be excited because I know quarterbacks its biggest need. And like, I want Aiden O'Connell to succeed. I want Gardner Mitchell to succeed. But to me, this team is a quarterback away from being a legit Super Bowl caliber. And to me, Penix gives you that upside that Minshew and Aiden don't. I don't know if he's going to be as ready to go the first time he steps onto that field. And maybe they decide to draft him at 13 and let him marinate for a little bit. The reason why, though, I will admit that it does scare me. And the reason why I do think it's a little bit of a reach there are certain people in this industry that I trust a lot. Daniel Jeremiah does a phenomenal job with his draft rankings. 33 overall prospect is where he has Michael Penix Jr. PFF has him ranked at 46. ESPN, Mel Kuyper Jr. has him ranked at 50. Dane Brugler, who spends so much time on his beast, has him ranked 52 overall. The guy that I trust more than anybody in the draft. Like, no disrespect to a lot of people that watch this show that do their own podcast. I talk more Raiders, I honestly think, than anybody 
that breathes air. I really do. So because of that, I'm confident in my ability to talk Raiders with anybody because I do it so often. These two guys right here spend more time analyzing draft content, players, scouting reports, it doesn't matter, than anybody that breathes air. And the fact that both of these two guys, the two guys that I respect more than anybody in the industry, have Penix ranked outside of the top 50, that does scare the absolute hell out of me. And I know he put up phenomenal numbers and he has done a lot of really good things in the Pac-12 with Washington. Like, he has gotten better and better, and he's been able to stay healthy over the past two seasons. I've also said on this show that if he was a right-handed quarterback, he would go in the top 10. But there are other mechanical issues. There are other things that do concern me. And if the Raiders didn't have a history of just swinging and missing in the first round, maybe I would be a little bit happier with the idea of taking Penix here at 13. Coming up here, more conflicting rumors around the Las Vegas Raiders and Michael Penix Jr. Because Tafer is saying that whispers are starting to grow that that's where the Raiders could potentially go. Well, according to the ESPN, Jordan Reed, uh, he ain't really on that boat at all. Before I tell you what exactly he said, if you haven't already got started with our sponsor, Prize Picks, I love Prize Picks. I know it's the off season, and some of you are like, well, Mitch, there's no football season. You're right. Well, there's no basketball season. Well, there's still the NBA going on. And the NBA is actually something that I've really tried to start doing more because I don't watch the NBA, but if I have some picks down and all I did was choose more or less, then I do end up watching those games. But like what I also just recently discovered with prize picks, and we know how easy it is, but it's also the year-long ones that you can do for the NFL. So one of the things that you can do if you don't already know, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, NHL, MLB entries today, right now on Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. One of the things that I recently discovered, though, again, was like the season-long Price Picks, which I took Bryce Young. Give me the more on 18 and a half passing touchdowns. Like, I think in his second year, you're going to see him take a big step forward. And they just surrounded him with so much more talent already before the draft has even started. I know they don't have a lot of picks. C.J. Stroud, with all that talent, the only way he's not throwing for more than 26 and a half touchdowns is if he ends up getting hurt. And then Chris Jones, I'm always going to go against the Chiefs guy. Give me the last. But also, when you look at his history of seasons, yes, he did have 15 sacks the year before. Historically, though, he's been under 12 sacks. So because of that, I went with less. And if anybody's watching the show right now is like, Mitch, I want to arrive at those picks with you. Well, then that link's going to be available to you all down in the comments and in the description of today's show. I promise, Price Picks is simple. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get started now if you haven't already at pricepicks.com slash CLNS and get a first time deposit match of $100. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Pick more, pick less. It's really that simple. All right, let's get into these conflicting rumors now because Tafer believes that the Raiders could pick Penix at 13. Jordan Reed, however, has said that the Raiders aren't expected to draft a quarterback at all at pick 13. Then Adam Schefter recently in the last week has said that the Raiders do in fact like Michael Penix Jr. Like, no disrespect to Tafer. But I usually believe ESPN guys over any Raiders beat reporter just because of how often those guys swing and miss on certain reports. And when a guy like Jordan Reed, who, guess what, is connected to Schefter, he's connected to a lot of these guys in ESPN. If they're saying that, yes, they want to try to trade up and get a Jaden Daniels, but if they don't trade up and get a Jaden, then they're just going to take either a corner at offensive tackle at pick 13. I have to look at that and I have to listen. I mean, this is what Jordan Reed had to say. Expect offensive line or cornerback at number 13 overall. At Alabama's Pro Day last month, Pierce seemed to be keeping a close eye on Terry and Arnold, who would give Vegas a shutdown corner on the outside. But sources with the team have also suggested to me the Raiders could add another tackle to pair with Colt Miller, Talisi Fuaga as a natural match based on the hole at right tackle and play style, but don't dismiss J.C. Latham at that spot either. So now you got Jordan Reed saying, if the Raiders don't trade up for Jaden Daniels, they're going to go with corner or an offensive tackle. Coming up, the guy that I listen to probably more than anyone. There are two people in this industry that I think every single person that watches this show, that pays attention to the NFL, when Adam Schefter says something and when Ian Rappaport says something, 
you listen a lot more. So since we got conflicting rumors here with Tafer, and we got a conflicting rumor here with his own guy, Jordan Reed from ESPN, I'm going to tell you what Schefter said. That way it maybe helps you figure out what these conflicting rumors are a little bit more. If you don't know, I am going to be on a Zoom call tomorrow, which is Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you missed the details last week, basically everybody that was supposed to be in the Zoom call last week, I sent the exact same details. So if you're like, Mitch, how do I get a hold of this? I will tell you all how to join our Zoom call next Wednesday. We're going to try to do one every single week. But to the people, you should know who you are. Check your email. Check your email. We used to do locals every Wednesday. I'm now going to start doing like Zoom calls, start doing some more like IG face-to-face -face stuff. I want to get to know you. I want you all to get to know me even better. And I had a lot of fun last week with the Lord Buddy Bear and uh, David Zahn. All right, so what exactly did Adam Schefter have to say about all of these conflicting rumors going on of what the Raiders could do with Penix. This is what he said. There has been a lot of chatter, real or not, that the Raiders do like Michael Penix. I do believe the Raiders would have loved to have found a way to go get Daniels, but it possible to make that happen. So there's two things that you can digest in there. Schefter is saying that the Raiders do, in fact, really like Michael Penix Jr., which if Schefter is saying that they do really like him, that does make me believe that, yes, they could take him at 13. Though, I still think that the Raiders, because I know that they tried to trade for an extra first-round pick with the Miami Dolphins, the Dolphins said no. Remember, the Raiders offered Miami 44-77-112 for pick 21. Miami ended up saying no to that. To me, I think like that's where the Raiders want to take Penix. They want to try to get that second first-round pick to then take a QB where they still want to go Terry and Arnold or a J.C. Latham with Talisi Fuaga at pick number 13. But Schefter also said that he literally said it's not possible to trade up into the top three. And if Schefter's saying it's not possible to trade up into the top three, you kind of have to believe that it's just not going to happen, which until the draft day happens, I am still going to hold out that Jaden Daniels figures out a way to partner with his homie Antonio Pierce here and Las Vegas. So if it is impossible to draft Jaden Daniels, should the Raiders take Penix at number 13? If you know right now, it's already a done deal. Like we already know Caleb Williams going number one overall in Chicago. What if we know right now, it's a cold hard fact, that there is a 0% chance that the Raiders get Jaden Daniels. Should you go with Michael Penix Jr. at pick number 13? Let me know down below. The reason why I have this take on the whole idea is I wouldn't love the pick, but I would be excited about it because I would rather the Raiders take the best player available. And based on people that I trust, based on people that I talk to, based on the tape that I watch, Michael Penix Jr. is not a player that you take at 13 overall. He's not. Is it the biggest team need at quarterback? Yes, I am still hoping that Penix finds a way to fall down the draft board. Maybe he falls out around one, which I don't think is impossible. Like, to me, there is just as much of a chance that the Raiders do still figure out a way to trade up for Jaden Daniels than Michael Penix Jr. sliding out around one. Like, Will, last year, Will Levis, never going to happen. Malik Willis was getting mocked in top five. He ends up falling around three. It happens year in and year out. I wouldn't love the pick because I would say it's a reach. However... I would be excited because it is a quarterback and he's going to be able to go in there and compete with Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and hopefully give us the best chance to win going forward.